back to Street Smart. We just talked about the debt crisis stateside, but let's shift focus to the one over in Europe. In his latest Bloomberg View, Guggenheim Partners Chief Investment Officer Scott Minard turns to the theory of cognitive dissonance to explain Europe's handling of its money problems. He says policymakers have committed at considerable cost to a path of bailouts and austerity programs. The recent European Council agreement out of Brussels offers more of the same billions in additional liquidity, yet no meaningful structural solutions. Scott joins us from Boston to explain. Scott, great to have you here. You know, you write about a social psychologist and his theory of cognitive dissonance in your column. Uh, it was a great, great read. What about his work caught your attention and, and how it applies to what's going on over in Europe today? Well, you know, it's funny because when, when we were discussing the piece uh, internally, uh, I remembered the, the concept of cognitive dissonance where people go down the road of believing something and then when they find out that reality is not lining up with their belief systems, rather than change their mind about what to do, they just start doing more of the same thing in a bigger way because they don't want to admit that they've made the mistake. And uh, the, the Europeans are so invested in the concept that they've created in relationship to the euro and, and the way they've handled the bailout so far and, and providing liquidity that they're, they're reticent to actually announce that they've, they've maybe gotten this thing wrong and they need to do something different. And in reality, Carol, they need to do something different. This is just not working. Well, so what happens if you've got this? They're so committed. They feel like they can't go back. They're so disconnected from reality then, Scott. I mean, is there any hope, in your view, uh, for the situation in Europe? Well, I, I actually do have a lot of hope for it. Uh, I think that they did uh, knowingly or unknowingly take some important steps in the last package. And, and that really has to do with the expansion of the role of the EFSF. Uh, you know, when we, I liken the EFSF to, uh, uh, our TARP program. Mm -hmm. For those who recall, when we set up TARP, the original intention of TARP was that it was a fund of money that was going to be used to buy troubled assets off the books of financial institutions. And what it became was a recapitalization vehicle for the financial system. I think EFSF in, in the latest round of, of changes is expanding its role and saying, you know what, this is, this is a different role than we originally anticipated. Right. And ultimately, and ultimately Carol, I think uh, it's going to become the vehicle uh, to issue pan-European bonds and engage in exchange offers to clean up this debt uh, of the peripheral nations. And in the process of doing that, uh, it will give the EU the ability to negotiate sovereign powers over mm. the peripheral nations. Scott, and, and that will be the ultimate fix. You're right, though. You know, you mentioned a few times, I think, in the article about the need for significant structural reform. And I love what you talked about. Uh, Jean-Claude Trichet, the ECB president, you said uh, he talked about envision about an idea of a ministry of finance of the union, a proposal where the European Union could have the power to veto the budget measure of countries that go harmfully astray. I mean, so we need to see some significant structural reforms, something like that as well, in your view? I, I think so, Carol. I mean, in the United States, we would call that a Treasury Department. <laughs> That's true. But in Europe, in Europe, we call it a ministry of finance. And, and I think we ultimately are going to go down that road. Uh, of, a, of a more concentrated uh, set of powers at the uh, European Union over the fiscal affairs of these nations. But again, with this cognitive dissonance, I mean, are they, are they truly seeing it at this point, or do you think the darkest hours of uh, this crisis over in Europe are, are yet to come? Well, as I, as I write in the column, uh, it, it is going to take a major crisis to get people to wake up and realize that what they're doing is not solving the problem. Mm. And, and that crisis, as we found in our own uh, situation here in the United States, uh, gives people the political power to take big steps which are completely unimaginable prior to the crisis. Yeah. Uh, you know, I point to Lehman and uh, the crisis that we had uh, as a result of the failure of Lehman right. and how much power that gave the policymakers. I think we're going to head for the same event in Europe. Yeah, I'm, th I'm thinking, though, also about the cognitive dissonance uh, here in the United States, Scott. It is a great read, and uh, thank you for walking us through it, Scott. Take care. Thank you, Carol. Scott Minard, who's the chief investment officer over at Guggenheim Partners.